which is the Congress of Vienna. And it's split into three main parts. The first part is an overview of the Congress of Vienna. The second part are the guiding principles of the Congress of Vienna. And the third part is the merits of the Congress of Vienna. So let's begin with the overview. The rise of Napoleon and the subsequent conquests of the European states had upset the social order and the political system of the pre-revolutionary days. A conference was needed to discuss solutions to these problems and thus was called at Vienna, the capital of Austria. The root problem facing the European powers at the Vienna Congress was whether the changes made by Napoleon to the map and to the government of Europe should be allowed to remain permanently or whether the former political and social order of Europe be restored. The decisions at the Congress of Vienna showed that the victorious powers chose to destroy the principles of Napoleon. This was a reaction against his principles of the French Revolution. On the whole, the aims of the Congress of Vienna were the following. The Congress of Vienna was said to be a congress to divide the spoils among the four victorious states, Britain, Austria, Prussia and Russia. To sweep away the ideas popularized by the French Revolution and Napoleon. To prevent future aggression from France. And to work out effective means among the four great powers to tackle future problems which were also important towards the aims of the Congress of Vienna. There were five guiding principles of the Congress of Vienna. One was to establish the balance of power so that you could maintain the status quo in Europe and there was no great power that had any more control than anybody else. Therefore, that's why the delegates at the Congress of Vienna felt that achieving peace in Europe was more important than punishing France too severely. The second guiding principle was to restrain the power of France and this was enabled through creating buffer states around France itself. So making the smaller states bigger so that it would be more difficult for France to invade and attack. The third guiding principle was legitimacy. It meant that the dynasties of Europe that had reigned in pre-revolutionary days should be restored to their thrones. The principle of legitimacy was supported by the French as a device for protecting France against drastic punishment and adopted by Austria as a convenient expression of the general policy of resisting changes. The principle of legitimacy was looked upon as an insurance against future revolutions. Restored rulers were usually despotic and reactionary, diehard supporters of conservatism and an enemy of liberalism. They were thus expected to uproot any revolutionary movements to the detriment of peace and stability. The fourth guiding principle was to reward the victors and punish those who lost. So Austria, Prussia, Russia and England all gained new territories, whereas France, Denmark and Saxony were reduced in size for supporting Napoleon. The fifth guiding principle was compensation. This was connected with the preservation of balance of power. The map of Europe was rearranged so that the land lost to Napoleon and under Napoleon was restored to their previous owners. But where the powers could not be restored or where restoration was not wise, there was compensation instead. Let's look at the merits of the Congress of Vienna and here we're going to evaluate whether or not it was a success. The first was that the adjustment of the balance of power and the checking of France were on the whole successful because no power dominated Europe as it had been under Napoleon. It had created a lasting peace in Europe for about 40 years until the Crimean War broke out in 1854. It may have been said that this aim was achieved for about 100 years between 1815 and 1914. There was no general European war. The great powers in this period went to war only in isolated conflicts of a short period of time. On the other hand, it might be claimed that this long-term peace was not attributed to the 1815 settlement alone. Therefore, there were other factors. The general exhaustion of the European powers after the Napoleonic Wars was one of the reasons. Europe then witnessed the rapid industrialization and many European governments were preoccupied with the improvement of conditions at home and suppression of revolutions. Thus, there was little time for them to wage war, and therefore Europe enjoyed long-term peace. The second merit was the international guarantee of permanent neutrality of Switzerland. Switzerland was only a geographical expression in 1789, but it became an independent state in Central Europe after 1815. 
Credit should also go to the 1815 Congress for its policy of moderation towards France. France was rather generous, generously treated. She was allowed to attend the Congress of Vienna and was admitted as one of the five powers in Europe. The significance was that the hostile feeling both inside and outside towards the European states was avoided. This would have also have had the effect of strengthening the constitutional monarchy. It was expected that constitutional monarchy would bring a reconciliation of the old and revolutionary forces. If France had internal peace, then France, then Europe would also be safe. In 1815, the Congress should also be credited for starting a system of settling international disputes through negotiation. It led to the Congress system which was a leading step to future international system of meetings, whereby conflicts and problems common to the European powers after 1815 were settled through debate rather than going to war. The fifth merit of the Congress of Vienna was that by strengthening Prussia and Piedmont and Sardinia, the Congress contributed indirectly to the unification of Italy and Germany. The decisions taken by the 1815 peacemakers for Prussia and Piedmont Sardinia to take up the leadership in the German and Italian unification and to found na national states by 1871. And the sixth merit is largely through the effect of England an important concession was made towards humanitarianism. The slave trade was declared inhumane and was abolished by Spain, France, Holland and Sweden and promised to be abolished by Portugal. So those are the six merits of the Congress of Vienna and should help you evaluate whether or not the Congress of Vienna was a success. Thanks for watching.